Hi, good afternoon. My name is Victor, and I thought I'd try my hand at doing some videos on my miniatures and how I paint them, and uh, possibly also videotaping some of the games that my group here in Portland, Oregon play. So this will be my first video. Um, just thought I'd show you how I paint some of my 10 millimeter figures for my War of Spanish Succession project. Um, here's a stand that is already completed. I'm using a 30 by 30 base. Those are in millimeters. Three ranks deep. And then uh, there are four stands to a unit. So I just thought I'd give you a little idea about how I go paint, go about painting them, sorry, and just see how this goes. I've never done a video like this before, so I thought I'd give it a shot. Uh, equipment wise, I'm using the Windsor Newton uh, Series 7 brush. This is a double zero. My figures themselves are 10 millimeter Old Glory. So they come in strips of five per strip. And essentially, uh, three strips is enough for one unit. And here we go. So I've already gone and painted the guns. That was done with a Vallejo chocolate brown and then I used uh, Foundry's metal uh, number 35B for the um, bayonet and right now I'm going to paint the, f the uh, flesh tone on this and I'm also using Foundry for that and I'm using the Foundry flesh 5B for that color So, just to show you, we got a little water here, what we're doing, and hopefully this is a good angle for the camera. This is my first try. I don't have anything real fancy. I just kind of have my iPhone, and I'll just give it a shot, see what happens. Nice thing about this, not too many... Uh, this is a detail to worry about. So I'm just kind of getting here in here, block in some color. Get a little more paint here. And I'll just kind of try to go through this. Just kind of show you what we do. I find painting 10 millimeter figures is kind of fun. I like the small scale because I can make the armies look a little bit larger. You know, you can get more units out on the table. And it just kind of looks like what I believe to be You know realistic looking I guess you know what they would have looked like if they were all out on the field in real life whether that's true or not I don't know but to my eye that's the way it works so just putting on some flesh color in here just kind of show you what we got here I'm not going to do all three strips of figures. What I'm going to do is I'll just do this and I'll paint this strip and just to show you what I'm doing. And any mistakes that I make, I will go back over just to correct any paint that gets on anything. 
where I don't want it. This is the first time that I've been doing anything like this. I don't know about anybody else, but whenever I start to put the paintbrush onto the figure, I end up holding my breath. So I can't really talk all that much. And today is one of those odd Oregon days where the sun is shining and it's raining. So if you hear any noise in the background, that's actually my uh, the rain going down the spout on the outside of the house. Hopefully all of this is in camera shot here. And I will definitely try different angles for camera. Not entirely sure this is the best way to be doing this, but it's what I've got at the moment. I don't have a very large uh, uh, tripod to do any, do any work like over my shoulder or anything, and I'm not sure how other people do this so if anybody out there is watching and um, has any suggestions I'd be glad to listen and take them on so I'm just gonna try to go back and paint the opposite side of their faces here um, just to give you an idea uh, I did um, Prime all these figures white, and then I used a wash of Citadel Nun Oil on them, just to make the detail on them pop out a little bit, and plus it does a little bit of shading that way too. Uh, this particular pose for the figures. Um, their hands aren't very well detailed. They're kind of hidden underneath the weapon itself, what they're holding. So even with the regular sculpt uh, unprimed, they're a little bit difficult to see. So I will try to uh, let me just skip over that part. Or I may have to do that off camera just so I can hold my hand a little bit steadier while I try to paint this. I recently did a uh, blog post on a couple of different methods how to paint these and I got some nice um, feedback from people about you know different ways to paint and make things go a little bit faster um, I haven't tried any of those suggestions yet but I'm going to uh, give those a shot All right, for right now, let's see if I can get some detail on some of these hands here, because they're just kind of, kind of like right there. I may have to do that off, I may have to do it and then go back and retouch up the You touch up the guns again. But, so there's just a little hint of fingers under here. Not entirely sure if it's worth actually doing this or not. As a rule for figures this small or you know, a little bit smaller, like six millimeter or something. 
If you can't see it at an arm length, it's not worth painting. But for right now, just for this video, I thought I'd give it a try and see what happens. I'll definitely have to go back over some of this. With this project, I've been trying to uh, find a set of rules that the group will like to play. And uh, we just recently tried um, Beneath the Lily Banners, which was a decent set of rules. We actually kind of liked it. Uh, we were able to get through a uh, sizable chunk of the game without uh, without too much too many issues for a first time through which was pretty good so I finished the flesh and a little bit of the hands that I can find so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna close up this wash my brush Oops. I'm gonna paint the paint the uh, uniform itself now, for this particular unit I'm painting, oops, Let's see if that comes into focus, but it's the Nettencourt Battalion, which is at the Battle of Alamansa in 1707, which is essentially is what I'm painting my troops for. And I figured that was a small enough battle to get started with instead of trying to do something large. Um, okay, and for this particular group, their um, uniforms were almost white. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Foundry's Arctic Gray Light. Get this shook up a little bit. Take it off camera here so you don't see it. Make everybody dizzy. And, and the Art of Great White or Light is actually a very whitish color. And they're Weren't too many for this particular unit. Um, the entire uniform is this color, even the cuffs. So painting it should be rather easy. But I won't be changing colors too much. Hopefully you can see all this in the in the frame while I'm doing this. Now I have used a little bit bigger brushes for some of this work sometimes. Um, I do like these Winsor Newton Series 7 brushes. They hold up really, really well. And uh, they clean up very well. So long as the, um, you take care of them, they work pretty darn well. I took an idea from someone off the internet. They use a two-bottle system to clean their brush so what they do and I think it was Mickey Sims if you've never seen his stuff he's a fantastic painter you should go check his YouTube channel out he's actually very very good he does quality work 
Um, but essentially, what he does to clean his brushes is he uses two mason jars, essentially, or something like that, with water. First jar is for the brush when it's fully dirty. He washes it out, gets it all nice and wet, and then he uses um, a bar soap. And he drags the brush across bar soap. And I, I happen to be using ivory soap. He then cleans it like that. Does a second rinse into that same jar that he had used the first time. Gets another load of soap on there. And then comes back out. Goes into the ivory soap again. And then he uses a scouring pad to actually wash all the paint off of the bristles themselves. And then he has the second jar, which is clean water, and he rinses his brush from there. And I found with, uh, after just trying this method out, that my brushes stay very, very clean, and uh, they don't fly apart like they have in the past. Um, I had tried different um, methods of cleaning and, you know, real expensive uh, brush cleaners and everything else. And really nothing seemed to stop that. But now with these, A, I think also better quality brush. But uh, also with the method that Mickey Sims uses. For cleaning his brushes works really really well so again just kind of blocking in this color not quite sure how um, this is going to be too tedious for everybody, but maybe I'll only do this one strip of five and I'll show you how I finish them up. So try not to bore everybody too much here. When the brush starts to get a little bit too too much paint on it, use the same cleaning method. Get the paint off of there. And get back at it. Then the brush is as good as new. So, like I said, I'll just finish up this strip of five and I'll show you what I do for the rest of it. And then later on, I'll go back and paint the other three strips here. So you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so with the fronts done, let's go back here. So I'm going to work on these guys here. Block in some color here. Now, because of the way this pose is, I'll have to go back in at a different angle to get that one front corner in here. But for right now, I'll just kind of show you what I'm doing this way.
And sorry, every time I put the brush down, I take a breath. Or hold my breath, actually. Hopefully I'm keeping this in camera shot so you can actually see what I'm doing here. And I do like these old glory figures. They're very nice. The detail on them is very good. I also like the Pendragon 10 millimeters as well. Also uh, very, very good sculpts. And uh, they paint up very, very well. Just that I ended up going with these because I got a really good deal at our local convention. Someone was selling them and there was quite a few packs. So I just decided to stick with what I had bought. And I will go back and paint the hair, like I said, I'll have to do a little touch up, a little here and there. Where I kind of messed up a little bit, but for the most part. It's just kind of what I do. Uh, in case you were wondering, the uniform information that I got for these troops comes from the Robert Hall book, which is based on the, the French for the War of Spanish Succession. And um, there are a few places, a few places that carry it. Uh, and I think may be wrong about this, but I think it's only in a lick. It comes on a CD. And it's in a PDF so that you can actually, you know, open it up on your computer. And you can then um, you know, bring it up on your computer screen and you can look at it. So now I'm going to do this little spot that's in here behind the gun. Just to get that in there and get a little color in there. And um, I found them very useful guides. One thing that is kind of amazing to me is, you know, this is the War of Spanish Succession, but... There's very little information that I've found outside of the few books that I've been able to pick up on the Spanish for this particular war. So let's see if we can see if I can get this up here so you can see it, see if we actually focus. So uniform for this particular case, his pants and the coats and the cuffs are all pretty much this Arctic gray light color by foundry. Um, and that's it. So I'll show you what I do. I'll paint the hat and we'll go from there. Just to give you an idea of what we're doing with that. Let me close this up. Since it's a new color, clean the brush. And the nice thing about this, when you do this two, uh, two jar method to clean your brushes, the 
clean water that you rinse again gets a nice um, diluted soap in there so that if you can use that water to thin your paints and the soap that's in there will break the surface tension of the paint so it'll actually flow a little bit better and it's really rather nice you kind of uh, take an extra step out you don't need a retarding medium or um, like an airbrush medium to thin the paint you can just use that or even just straight dish soap if you've got it but this works out pretty well let me just go grab my black so again I'm gonna use some foundry black shake that up the hats one thing about these try to do the same stroke all the way across the strips where I spend less time trying to move things around or change my hand angle and everything else so that while I'm doing this um, I can save a little bit of time so if I was going to paint the hats on all these I'd do the same stroke all the way across and I'm pretty sure everybody else may do it that way unless you're you know if you're doing a production line method like this so now paint the back Again, hopefully this is in shot so you can actually see what I'm doing here. And I will go back and paint the hair. Everybody in my army, especially when they're this small, gets light brown hair. Tends to give enough of a contrast. Hey, you don't have to worry about it. Now we're going to paint the rest of the, the hat. Trick sometimes is not to get it on whatever else you just painted. here hopefully you can actually see all this right. now paint this side paint this hats we're pretty much done now while I have the black out I'm gonna paint the scabbard and it gently hopefully you 
you can see this. then I did miss a little bit on the bottoms here let's go back and touch this up real quick all right the hat should be done with the black I am going to go back and edge them in white because that's what they were for this particular unit. But for right now, I'm going to paint the straps and the gun cartridge box. And for that, I'm going to use a uh, dark brown. Let me wash this. I find if I do this in between uh, cleaning the brushes in between paints and even sometimes even while I'm painting the same color things uh, brushes stay really good well. all right let me grab my brown For that, I'm going to use a flat brown from Vallejo. Uh, and I don't know if anybody does this or not, but it's kind of an interesting thing that I found. So, it's a little artist card, artist board, little canvas. And it's white, except for where I spilled some paint. And then... This is uh, from a uh, um, photo. Sorry, forgot what I was talking about. So this is from a photo frame. I took the glass out. I put it over the top. And it's a nice little palette where, depending on what your primer is, so in this case, white, and I can put this over. And that way you can see exactly what the color's gonna look like on the white primer. I also have it one spray painted primer black and the other one gray. That way when you take color, you can see how to react against that primer before you even put it on the figure. I thought that was kind of a neat idea. <clears throat> Again, found out from somebody else. I didn't come up with that. That was somebody else. I don't remember who that was. Though. All right. <clears throat> so flat brown for the strap and the cartridge box so we'll see if my hand is steady enough today to do this yeah, not too bad on here all right now we'll 
we'll go back and just paint out the cartridge box. Now, of course, I realize that, you know, in some cases, some of the cartridge boxes were black. Some might have been other brown colors, things like that, but um, it's just kind of the way I do it. Now we'll go back, paint the hair. Obviously, I'm not going to bother trying to paint a strap on the front of these guys because everything's covered up by their guns. So the hair is going to be light brown. of it. So Vallejo light brown. A little bit of color. And There you go. Everybody's got light brown hair. Now the only thing to do is the trim on the hat, which will be white. Which in this case I could probably get just get away with going back and reusing the Arctic Gray from Foundry. It's close enough to white in this case. which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to use the Foundry Art of Grey. I'm going to just put a little edging on it. So, what I do is very just very carefully just kind of go across the top like that
Again, just trying to use the same stroke for each section that I do. That way I can just continue to move on kind of quickly. Tops here a little bit, a little bit more difficult sometimes at this angle. Hopefully all of this is in camera shot. This is going to work. Oops. Too much. Sometimes with this. go back and clean up the top of the hats with a little bit of black just to edge it again but essentially so that strip of figures is done but I will now go back and clean up some of the spots that I made mistakes at or got paint over it just to clean those up the base themselves this section down here when I go to put them on here we'll get a little wash of um, burnt umber and essentially or burnt sienna not burnt umber burnt sienna and I'll use this this is from a local craft store it's about a dollar for this size jug of paint and I'll just base it that way that way when I go to flock everything, none of this will stand out and the base will get covered. So that's pretty much it. I hope that you found this entertaining and useful. And I hope to be able to do some more in the near future. Um, come up with some other things, show some different techniques on what I'm painting and how I'm painting. Um, please like the video. Uh, leave some comments. We'd love to be able to chat with people about different ways of painting, how you do it. I love to learn. I love to try different things. I love to, uh, you know, always evolve with my painting skills and everything else because I don't consider myself a very good painter at all. So just having, uh, you know, somebody to talk to and see what they do, learn from them and go from there so everybody have a great day again i hope you enjoyed this and we'll talk soon bye